Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Anita D and Fleming S. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up, a Reddit user shared this image in Lone Pine, California at a supercharger location with Mount Whitney in the back. Just thought it was worth sharing. Next up, we have a great chart from Troy Tesla showing Tesla's BEV share in different markets. This is indeed excluding hybrid. Just wanna highlight two things. First, you will note the trend in China and Europe and to a smaller degree in the United States. Over the last two years or so, Tesla's market share of BEVs has been declining. In case you're new to the EV story, this was always going to happen. As other automakers release new EVs into the market, Tesla's share of that market is going to come down and that's totally fine. The real metric to watch is Tesla's market share of the overall auto market. But with that said, in the United States, Tesla has been selling EVs now for over a decade they still have over a 63% market share of the EV space, just showing you how much the US has been lagging when it comes to real EV competition for Tesla. So just good data to have in the back of your mind. On that note, just a quick update on Audi. They're saying from 2026, they will introduce only all electric models. And by 2023, that will be the last year for any internal combustion engine vehicle. This article is funny though, because this is the headline saying Audi is now the new EV market leader because they have five available models that are distinct compared to Tesla's four. Not sure why Audi would brag about number of models available when across all of those models, they still only sold 8,009 EVs to a Americans through the first six months of 2022. Next up, we have the ominous Giga Berlin fire, and now the critics are calling for the entire factory to be shut down. What happened was, in the middle of the night, which I'll admit is a little odd, firefighters were called to Giga Berlin to put out this fire that was significantly removed from the factory, and it was only some cardboard and other things that were actually on fire. What else was on fire? Paper and wood. It's being investigated whether shredding work started the fire, but no injuries have been reported. Apparently, Tesla has commissioned a recycling company to oversee this area, and it's in this area where packaging material is recycled and shredded on the spot. Now, just real quick for today's comedic relief, the Citizens Initiative already has called for an immediate stop of Giga Berlin's vehicle production. Our worst fears have come true. We demand a production stop until the causes and circumstances have been clarified and all safety relevant measures in the water protection area have been implemented. And further, representatives from a local water board organization said, so what can be seen there clearly confirms that extinguishing water seeps into the unpaved area. Considering the fact that the groundwater is unprotected at the site without a water impermeable cover, we see this with great concern. And here's some more video footage. So look, in all fairness, this was a little bit bigger than a backyard campfire, but to call for the entire production of vehicles to be shut down, it seems a little aggressive to me. So for now, the big question is how did this fire start? And of course, many people are asking, are there any arsonists in this local citizens initiative or in these local water? organizations. And no, I'm not saying that's what happened, but it wouldn't surprise me. On a serious note though, I can't see this impacting vehicle production at all. And I wish we didn't have to talk about stuff like this, but when you have people like Michael Schellenberger who are highly followed, purposefully spreading disinformation using this article to basically say lithium batteries kill a ton of people because yes, he's pro-nuclear, just creating his own narrative. I have to do my part in combating this disinformation. So as I said on Twitter, this has nothing to do with lithium batteries or electric vehicles. Next up, a Tesla Semi was spotted all the way over in Louisville over the weekend. So some people are out there saying this could be one of the first customer deliveries. I think that's highly unlikely. One, because this Semi is already somewhat beat up and it looks like it's been through some testing. It does have this Tesla dot number on the side of the vehicle as well. So so it's true that customer deliveries do feel imminent in the coming weeks and maybe months, but I think this one at the very least may be one that Tesla will keep for themselves to continue to do testing or to transport parts between Giga Nevada and Fremont. Moving on, another storyline that I'm not enjoying talking about, but I do think it's important that people are aware what's going on. Basically, there's a filmmaker out there looking to make a short story about Tesla and Elon Musk and distracted driving, and they're offering to pay influencers, people that have social media followers, 
$100 to record a 15 minute video basically talking negatively about Elon and Tesla. This supposedly for a short film titled Man vs. Musk. The script that these creators are given to then read to their audience basically says Elon has been intentionally tone deaf to distract the driving, saying fact, he has built his empire disempowering drivers from the ability to pay attention and keep their car on the road. Here's some more of the script, I won't read it to you, basically making the argument Elon is leading drivers to falsely believe it's safe to keep their eyes off the road. So there you have it. Now, before we move on, I will say, Starting to feel a little bit like the Tesla Q crowd is getting a little anxious and nervous with what could be developing over the next year or so when it comes to Tesla the company and Tesla stock. And yes, for a real Tesla stock rip, it could be longer than a year given all of the macro talk, the recession, the war and everything, but you get what I'm saying. Next up, a new Tesla feature in the car UI. If you click on the supercharger pop-up and scroll down, it will now tell you basically how busy that supercharger is historically at different times of the day. So basically adding historical site occupancy and the charging fees because in some locations, Tesla is going to offer different rates depending on how busy the supercharger is at different times of the day. Here we have Automotive News putting out a new article. I just wanna highlight one thing that they mentioned. This once again has to do with the 40 680 production at Giga Berlin. We've already talked about this in depth. I will include a link above if you missed that video. But they said Tesla has paused plans for a 50 gigawatt hour battery factory next to its plant in Grünheide. This, as far as I know, is false. It's not that Tesla has stopped all of the plans. Again, it's just certain parts of 4680 production have been shifted and reprioritized for Giga Austin to take advantage of the Inflation Reduction Act, but it's not like the entire line has been paused. Once again, it's just certain very detailed parts of this overall process. Here we have some good news for future Model Y owners in Australia as your delivery dates may indeed have been bumped up as it looks like some of the production from Giga Shanghai is going to be shifted to be exported earlier to Australia. Many Australian order holders are seeing their delivery dates pushed up. Now they're looking at mid-October to early November when originally they were November to February 2023. That report from The Driven lines up with what Troy Teslike said. Giga Shanghai appears to have switched Model Y production to exports on September 21st. Buyers from Australia and Japan started receiving VINs on September 21st. Normally they would switch on September 26th. This will help with Q4 deliveries, not three, because remember, these will now be in the process of being shipped when quarter three ends. Next up, we've talked about this earlier this year. This was most likely going to happen, that this tax exemption for new energy vehicles in China was going to be extended again because the last three, four, five plus times it was supposed to end, it's been extended every time. Simply put, new energy vehicles bought between January 1st and December 31st, 2023 will be exempt from vehicles vehicle purchase taxes. On average, this has worked out to about a 1,400 US dollar incentive. Now for some context, listen to this. From January to July this year, China exempted 40.7 billion RMB. Now that's 5.6 billion United States dollars worth of NAV taxes, up 108% over the same period in 2021. And that's only for half the year, so clearly a big number of taxes being exempt by the Chinese government should show you how serious they are about electrification. Here we have the Boring Company prepared to offer another $15 million that it will spend of its own money toward the first phase of construction for these new tunnels in San Antonio. No agreement has been signed for these twin underground tunnels in San Antonio. However, now with the Boring Company prepared to invest a little bit more on its own, the chair of the Alamo Regional Mobility Authority said that's a lot of money that's not coming from taxpayers to improve community transportation. Transportation. I don't see anybody else coming in and giving us 50 million that's not funded by taxpayers in some way, shape, or form. Estimated project costs that should take passengers from the airport to downtown and back, of course, in Tesla's around $250 million, and these tunnels should produce annual revenue up to $25 million by moving as many as 112,000 passengers every day 
or about 10% of all passengers that arrive at the airport. And don't forget, the Boring Company also wants to build another tunnel that would actually connect San Antonio and Austin. Next up, just to highlight two things about BMW from a Reuters article, they're expecting to reach the higher end of their seven to 9% margin target for their automotive business and sees slight sales growth in 2023. Again, to contextualize, Tesla is around 30% margins when it comes to its automotive business. But BMW did say it's expecting to hit its target of 10% fully electric sales this year, which would be around 240 to 245,000 vehicles. Next up, when it comes to the Porsche IPO, it looks like the demand is very strong, at least according to this report. The books will close on September 28th, and sources are saying they're indicating demand exceeded the full deal size, and the demand has been incredibly robust. This could make for one of the largest IPOs in European history. So when it's all said and done, this IPO could value Porsche at around $80 billion. So looking at the largest automakers by market cap, you can see that would slot them in essentially around fourth or fifth on the list, basically in line with the current market cap of VW. And significantly ahead of other companies like Mercedes, GM, and Ford. On that note, Porsche is aiming for 50% of vehicle sales to come from EVs and hybrids by 2025, but by 2030, they want 80% of all new vehicle sales to be electric. One of the ways Porsche plans to get there is to electrify its Macan. They eventually, in the long run, plan to produce around 80,000 per year to match the same output of the internal combustion counterpart. The electric Macan is supposed to go into production before the end of next year. Not only that, but an all-electric Panamera seems to be on deck as well. Next up, one more cruise incident, not an accident, but one of their self-driving vehicles again seemingly just stopped in the middle of the road. So Dan Thorne stopped and called the number on the car, and he said Cruz had a team out there in about 20 minutes. Next up, I guess we have some more comedy for today as BuzzFeed reached out to Elon in an email basically asking how Optimus has progressed. Elon replied saying, quote, I hate BuzzFeed with the passion of a thousand suns. Next up from Automotive News, Rivian has confirmed that it's on track for its next generation of vehicles that are set to be a little bit smaller than the R1T and R1S titled the R2 platform. These vehicles are set to be the first ones out of the new factory in Georgia. So Rivian planning for smaller and more inexpensive vehicles that may include a new pickup, possibly named the R2T, along with different SUVs. So we have this potential new R2 or second generation lineup coming from Rivian that some of which may indeed move over to lithium iron phosphate or LFP cells to help bring down the overall cost. Here we have GM seemingly taking a page out of Tesla's book, calling back workers, in this case, corporate workers to the offices at least for three days a week. Back in 2021, when work from home was taking off, GM had implemented its own version of this titled Work Appropriately, but now they're essentially unwinding that, saying they're changing the policy to drive collaboration, enterprise mindset, and impact. Here we have James Dauma sharing a Tesla patent that they were granted. He was impressed that they got such a broad award. Now this patent is fairly involved, but if you're into the auto labeling and AI space, I'll include a link below. Next up, personally, I think this would be an awesome idea, especially as watches become more and more like a little phone on your wrist. I'm looking at you, Apple Ultra, but let me know if you guys would be into a feature like this, then maybe I can tweet at Elon over the next few days if people would actually like something like this and try to get his attention. And last up for today, Starlink has now made over 1 million user terminals. That'll do it for today. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.